so hello, hello, good morning. Uh, glad to see so many people at the same place. Nice, thank you for coming. So my name is Andrei Solnsev, uh, hard to pronounce, I know. Uh, I am uh, from Estonia, from company Codebar. And today I'm going to talk about flaky tests or unstable tests. How to deal with unstable tests. How to investigate them, how to fix them. Uh, a couple of words about me. I'm a software developer from uh, Estonian company Codeburn. Uh, I like unit tests, test-driven development, uh, clean code, extreme programming, and so on and so on. I also love open source, uh, maintain several projects, and I'm, I'm creator of Serenite, one uh, open source project for uh, testing, for uh, automated UI tests. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm from Tallinn, Estonia. Uh, here is just a few pictures from Estonia. It's nice. Welcome. Welcome to Estonia. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so what, what we are talking about? We are talking about uh, automated tests. When you write, or you or your company writes some software, what you want? You want to be sure that uh, this software works. It not only works right now, when you like clicked and tested it, but al also it will work in future. Right after any refactoring changes and so on, and the only way to be sure that it really works is automated tests, right? And that's at least that's how we work at Codeborn. In Codeborn, we developers write production code and write tests, maintains those, those tests, and that's why I have a great experience of maintaining tests and uh, fighting with unstable tests. I have like unique uh, opportunity to at any moment, change production code, change tests, change locators, uh, whatever, do hacks in code to fix tests, and so on. Uh, what's the pain about all the tests is that they are flaky. Actually, all kinds of tests m can be flaky. Uh, unit test, integration tests, UI tests, and to end tests. Uh, but the, mon the, mon uh, yeah, the most interesting tests uh, that are flaky that we are going to talk about today is UI tests because, because it's visual, it's entertaining, we can watch it. We will watch some videos today. So what is flaky test? Flaky test is a test that uh, fails, not always, but sometimes, from time to time. That's a problem. It's not always broken. It's very rarely broken. Uh, yeah, and it gets broken without any code changes. That's a problem. Like yesterday it was green, today it became red without any changes. That's a problem. Nobody knows why it's now broken today. Yeah, this is how your build history might look like if you have some flaky tests. But actually, the fact is that everybody has flaky tests. Uh, <clears throat> and you never know when the test failed, when the build failed, when the build is broken. You never know is it a bug or not. That's the biggest problem, because yeah, you, lo you lose trust for automated tests. Uh, and what typically happens in many big uh, companies uh, when automated test engineer comes to work in the morning and sees that third tests have failed at night, what he does? He decides that, well, yeah, we need to investigate these fa failed tests, but actually, well, uh, mm, and you know what bad word is encrypted here? You know, can you guess what ugly word is this? Yeah, well, re let's rerun them. Let's rerun the tests. We'll see probably they might get green after rerunning. Uh, probably some other test might get broken again that w were green. And this is how typical QA engineer day looks like. He comes to work, runs automated test. It takes probably, of course, it depends on company, on project, but probably 20 minutes. Then he uh, sees some broken tests, reruns. Automated test, it takes, again, 20 minutes, probably, for example. Probably a few hours in some companies, or a few days even, probably. And then he decides, well, still we have some broken tests. We need to investigate it and uh, analyze failures, uh, failures, and it takes like many hours, typically. Yeah? and your whole release process is postponed and you need to investigate it every time. Like you call it automation. You, you need to do it manually, like after every broken release, uh, broken build. 
that's why I think this topic is really hot, it's really important for all of us and we need to investigate, we need to learn how to find this automated test and I want to share my experience, uh, how to fight them. Yeah. How usually people fix flaky tests? How usually do it? Uh, yeah, when someone sees flaky tests, he says, well, give me the keyboard, now I'm going to add sleep to test, right? In most cases it helps. In many cases, it helps. Or there are some other options. Someone sees broken tests and says, let me apply Gradle Enterprise. Yesterday I saw below Gradle, guys. Are you here? No? <laughs> okay, let's continue. <laughs> and what Gradle does, Gradle has a plugin for rerunning uh, failure tests. Mm, cool, what a rock and science. And uh, in order to, in order to, Mark this test as flaky. Hmm, good to know, yeah, thank you. Uh, there are even uh, advanced options. <laughs> you can, uh, some people decide to apply, uh, like there are several frameworks or products. For example, Report Portal, one of them, who says uh, that, yes, we will apply machine learning. Yeah, in order to, again, mark some tests as flaky. Hmm. Thanks, nice. But actually, I'm, I'm saying it a little bit like too, too extremely. Actually, this guy says that, yes, we will mark test as flaky, but you, please don't stop. You, please start some investigation to understand how to fix this test. And that's my topic, how to investigate and how to fix these flaky tests. But yeah, overall, we are afraid of flaky tests. That's a problem. And my point is that let's not be afraid, but quite opposite. Let's love them, because it's really interesting to investigate them. Uh, so today's plan is I will, I will show some collection of my favorite flaky tests from my real life experience and uh, we will analyze some typical reasons of flakiness and probably if we have time we will yeah, like give some takeaways how to fight with flaky tests. So my collection of flaky tests, some videos, some nice investigations, the very basic example, the very simple example, like a uh, trivial example, is se usual Selenium test for testing a Google site, Google search. It looks like this. Uh, if everyone has some experience with Selenium in Java, this code looks like this. You, you say like the driver, navigate to this page. You say like find input element with name Q, uh, type some letters here, uh, here, click some search button, and assert that there are like so many elements uh, results found, like usual test. The question is, which one of these lines, ah oh, shit, it was spoiler. <laughs> yeah, which one of these lines might fail? Yeah, actually, yeah, any, any of these lines. The first line might fail because there is slow internet or something is not loaded or some microservice like that you are testing instead of Google is like unstable or slow, it was not deployed today or for some reason. Uh, Kubernetes is not, was not sleeping well yeah, tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Or th this line might be broken because, for example, developers has changed th this locator. They have renamed this uh, name or something like that. Or this element is not rendered yet because of, again, slow rendering, slow internet and so on. There are plenty of reasons. Uh, why this line might fail, it's really interesting. Uh, sometimes it fails with this like really tricky exception. I'm going to show the video how it really happens. And this line might fail probably because a number of, uh, not all, uh, all elements are already rendered. Probably they are, they are being rendered slowly a little bit or a number of elements has changed in database or something like that. Uh, so let me show the video. Yeah, it's my favorite part. Actually, yeah, Google test looks like this. Mm -hmm. Like this, you can run it, and I think now it's green. You see, yeah, it's green. Nothing is broken. Yes, this is this is my test. But uh, usually, when I know that this test is flaky, what I do first of all, I run it many times. Uh, probably ten times is enough in this case. Uh, yeah, and now now it's better to show the video. I already did it. Mm -hmm. That's a video of failing uh, uh, Google test, uh, like I'm running it 10 times, 10 times. First is green, second is green, 
force is given by fifths, oops, fails. And fails with exactly that uh, error that like this button is not clickable or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we got flake a test and the nice fact is that we know how to reproduce it. We just run the easiest way is to rerun this test many, many times. And one from 100 probably might fail. This is already a very good way. And now let's try to analyze why it failed. Let's run the same video much, much slower, probably 100 times slower than in reality. Uh, and how it happens? This fifth test types in keyword and wants to click the button. But where is the button? Button like search, like run search. Where is the button? The problem is that the button is can you already guess? The button is here, in this place. The button is covered by this preview pop-up. At some moment, Google like uh, managed to render this pop-up so quickly that this could not click this button before the pop-up appeared. The button is hidden by preview pop-up. And it doesn't happen no, always, by it, like sometimes. No, 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 it means flake animations. Uh, so if we try to analyze first results, uh, reasons of most of like test, 90% uh, of like test are fragile locator locators, changing locators, uh, slow environment or a stable environment, unstable microservices, my f favorite. And actually it's boring to talk about these reasons for me, because like just set up your process, just work with developers, just manage how do they change locators, uh, just set up your, like develop deployment process, set up monitoring, uh, just uh, check before running every test, check that old services are deployed. Like for me, it's like stupid problem. Like I don't really understand why everybody is talking about that. Let's dive deeper. The reason of other remaining 90% of flaky tests are more interesting. Uh, speed of uh, asynchronous requests, order of asynchronous requests, browser performance, uh, all these pop-ups, uh, and so on. And there is a good news. There is a library which solves out of the box all this problem. This is library created by me, Selenite. Uh, and it, like, it helps to avoid all these problems. Like uh, the usual Selenium test rewritten to Selenite syntax looks a little bit shorter, nicer, more readable. But it's not the biggest advantage. The biggest advantage is that it, uh, it's smart. Uh, for example, this uh, $2 should have size. This uh, check has a built-in like, smart waiting. It can wait a little bit if elements are not rendered yet, if not loaded yet. Uh, so then it can wait a little bit. And thanks to this smart waiting, all these checks are like stable. If we rerun this test like 100 times, it will be green still. So it's a nice news. Yeah, once again, all this, all the selenite checks like should be something, should have something. They are all uh, like smart and can wait a little bit. So all we, all the problem with asynchronous requests, uh, like fix it or animations and so on, like is fix it. This is a good news. Yeah, all this method by default wait to up to four seconds, but you can configure it this time up if you want. Additionally, when the test fails, uh, Selena takes some screenshot and page source so, so you can dive deeper and investigate what happened. You can see from the screenshots what happened. So the good news, Selena solves like other 90% of tests, uh, flaky tests, but there is remaining 1% of very tricky flaky tests. And that's my area of interest. Let's dive into this remaining 1% of flaky tests, which are not like easily solvable. And here comes my collection of real life examples from real projects. First example, without video, uh, is uh, like more technical, a little bit more technical. It, it doesn't have video yet. Uh, so uh, we had a test that checked that on some page we saw card details in interim bank, something like that, and we checked the expiration time of the card. And at what, at one day when op autumn has come and start, st the test started failing uh, unexpectedly. And the test looked like this, like art expression should have text, this one. Okay, nice. But at that day, 
uh, this uh, page really showed different date, which was this one. It, it was like December 19, and it was January 20, like without any code changes, just started failing for some reason. Uh, later, I like get to know that this test failed only a few days in a year, and not every year, only some years, and only a few days in a year. That's uh, interesting. Why, why? Why only during these days? Uh, so we, we started investigating and we found uh, it was like quite simple because during these days, tests stably failed. Like, so it's an easy case. You, during these three days, you can investigate what, the, what happens. And we found in production code, the expression time of the card was formatted using this Java expression. And in tests, when we tried to calculate the expected uh, result. We calculated expression time using this expression. Can you spot the difference? There is small, small difference in these letters. In these letters, yes, right? Big, like capital and low cares. What's the difference? Does anybody know? I didn't know. Also, but the fact is that the first expression gives 19 and the second expression gives 20. What? You might ask, <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, right? Uh, yeah, which one is correct? Do we have bug in production code or do we have bug in tests? Which one is correct? Uh, this is, here is the answer, because nobody knows, of course. Uh, why should anyone know <laughs> this fact? So, uh, small letter, like lowercase, means like usual year, like we all understand, usual year. But capital letter, Y, means not just year, but, but week-based year. In most, in most cases, they have the same value, except two, three days. <laughs> uh, that's a problem. Yeah, this is a usual year. And for example, for this date, for this specific date, uh, lowercase y uh, returns 19. Simple. But what means uh, week-based year? It means uh, like to, to which year belongs that week. Shit. So that day, that specific day was Tuesday, and if you look uh, at the whole week, th th that week like lasted from this year uh, day to this day, which means that most of this week belongs to the next year. So th the year of that week was 20. I have no idea why. <laughs> Why is someone in Java world, in some ecosystem, probably invented this letter? I have no idea. Probably it's important for some accounting or something like that. I don't know, some legal reasons. But yeah, if you occasionally use wrong case, oh, you will get a problem. Few days in a year. Uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it was another uh, uh, illustration. So yeah, this test failed only a few days in a year and not every year. But still, it was simple because during these days, we could reproduce the problem. Uh, yeah, so adding to the potential uh, reasons of flaky tests, box in tests, it was back in tests, uh, in fact. And let's come uh, to the next uh, example, and Bob. When we saw that picture, we saw that, sure, it, it, it's not possible how it can, it can happen. Let's see, uh, once upon a day, we developed an internet bank which worked in kiosk mode which means like, you know, in like metro stations, in these big TVs, it was like internet bank with this big uh, keyboard. And people must click on the display, like letters to login. And uh, we had an automated test for this uh, page, which tried to log in with user uh, name Bob. This test wanted to click to type Bob here to username. And what it did? Mm -hmm. What the automated test did, first it fi uh, finds uh, letter B, clicks it, then it finds letter O, clicks it, then it finds again letter B and clicks it. In most cases it worked. It was green like most of the days, like almost always. But very rarely, sometimes it failed. And when the test failed, we saw on screenshot that in this field we had not just Bob, but N Bob. The test didn't contain any code that clicked N letter. No. We start we like uh, start investigating and found that we did not have N Bob string in production code, in tests, in database, in any Excel, in any JSON, 
in Kubernetes config, no, we didn't have this word, never, like in any projects. So how it's possible that we got in Bob here? Like what, what the mystery? We saw, we saw that oh, it's impossible. But when we look into the code, the code for this test, like very simplified, looked like this. And actually we see some strange line here, right? We see some strange line. This test opens this web page, clicks body, like uh, sends these three keys and like in this simplified code. And the strange line is uh, yeah, this one. And after some experimenting and burning the search, we, when we comment out this line, this test doesn't fail anymore. So this is a trick. Uh, when we, this line is executed, the letter N appears in the input. The question is why? How it's possible? And the answer is, you probably might catch it already. The answer is, yeah, why click body appends N? The answer is geometry. <laughs> yes, N was occasionally exactly in the center of the screen. And in Selenium, if you don't know, click, clicking some elements actually clicks exactly the center coordinates of the element. And this, that was the center of the body. The next uh, interesting questions, question is why the test did not fail always? Why it failed only sometimes, very rarely? And the uh, answer is that it depended on screen size. On some screens, the browser is bigger. In some screens, the browser is smaller. In Obviously, in, in most cases, the center of body was some, somewhere here, it, like it was not clickable. The click did not do anything. But sometimes, when the browser was a little bit smaller. Uh, another interesting question, why that click was needed at all? Right? This is a good question. Uh, and uh, we like, uh, managed to investigate that at some moment it was added just to remove focus from some previous field. Because Selenium doesn't have methods like unfocus. Or, or as far as I know, JavaScript also doesn't have. Like unfocus previous field. You can, cannot do it. You only can click some next element. And we didn't find any good elements on this page that would not be clickable. And we just decided to click body. <laughs> that was uh, the case. So moral, uh, moral here is just don't write code just in case. Because I, as a maintainer of open source library, I see a lot of complaints, a lot of snippets of test code, and they always have a lot of code that is not really needed, that was written just in case, just like probably it might be better. Uh, so let's add uh, to potential reasons of flaky test size of browser window. Uh, it, it might uh, like affect the tests and trash and just writing some code in uh, just in case and rushing. And takeaway was here for me that uh, the very common practice running browser like maximized actually is a bad practice. It's, it's really common. O almost always people do that. The, in automated tests, then they open browser to the full size of the window. And now I understand that this is really a bad practice. And actually a good, because it makes your test dependent on screen size. And a good practice actually to set fixed size to the browser window as small as possible. As small as your application supports. For me, this, this is a good idea, like to check that everyone works in your application even on very small screen, which is supported by your like specification. Yeah? You can even write parameters that test and like test your application in several dimensions. Yes, several sizes, why not? But not maximized. Uh, <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then I started experimenting to learn how click really works in Selenium. And if you didn't know, as I mentioned, it, uh, cl uh, click in Selenium actually is written like in a very strange manner. Actually, it's composed of two steps. First step, Selenium uh, calculates coordinates of the center of this element. And the second step, Selenium clicks exactly at these coordinates. What can go wrong? What can go wrong? Yes, sure. If something changes between these two steps, if we calculate the coordinates, but between the element has moved somewhere, then Selenium will click at this point and probably do nothing or click some other element occasionally. 
or if this element was resized meanwhile, or if you have some animations and so on and so on. And probably click will click some empty point and you will not see any results. No errors probably even. Uh, I did some experiments. Let me run. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, here, uh, I have like some testing page. This is an automated test which tries to click this button. And this button is moving all the time uh, with some speed. And at this point, the test is stable. You see, it like it clicks the button all the time. Like, no problems. But what if we change a little bit the speed of this uh, button? Yeah, I have some variables here. Oh, yeah. Uh, for example, if we change vertical speed of this button a little bit faster, now it starts failing sometimes. Like quite rarely, but sometimes 10% of runs of clicks is missing. If you change the speed of this button even more, vertical speed, it will be, it will get even more unstable. Hmm, not for some reason. Hmm, interesting. Wow, now it's more stable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's quite unpredictable world. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have like more or different experiments, clicking some elements which is which is resized, being resized at that moment, and so on and so on. And we count how many times did we click exactly in the center of this element, like not every time as you see. So yeah, I have uh, lots of experiments. <coughs> and it really like affects in real life. We get some flaky test because of that fact. Uh, uh, the only really stable way to fix this problem that we found is just to disabling animations when running tests. It's not always uh, trivial. Uh, this is one, just one code snippet from some of our like older projects which, which used jQuery. And we just Googled it a little bit and found code snippet for disabling all animations when we run in test mode application. So, like, all button, buttons appear immediately without moving, resizing, and so on. Uh, so it's not like generic solution. It depends on your project, it depends on your code and so on. And that the biggest problem is that to do that, you like need to talk to developers, which I know in many companies people don't like to do. I, I mean, automated engineers, yeah. Uh, and another, now let's see a video of another uh, real life example. Here we had uh, a test that needed to click a button. It needed to put one checkbox, like select one line in the table and click the button. Let's see how it happens. Here we have a table that is being uh, like loaded partially. Occasionally at that day, this, these lines which are like silver, they were loaded quickly. And these lines that are Rimi, they were loaded slowly. But since they are more important, they had to be added to the start of the, of the table. Like, they had to be uh, first lines. But test occasionally wanted to check one silver and click start transfer. Like, to pay money to silver. Easy. Uh, and I artificially, like, put in production code uh, highlighting. Then if, if when test uh, could click the button, the button uh, gets green. Like, so we can visually see if the click worked. In this case, the click worked, the button gets green. Now, I hope we will see it slower. Yeah, now let's see it slower. Mm -hmm. The test checks, puts the first checkbox while other rows are being loaded and clicks the button. And when I rerun this testing loop many times, what happens? Mm -hmm. The first time, button is green, okay. Second time, button is green, okay, nice. Third time, still green. Fourth time, aha, uh -huh. button is not green, button is blue. It, miss, it uh, means that test click, miss it. And it miss it exactly because of this button was moving down all the time. Because these first lines were being loaded slowly at that day. That, that's an illustration of real life, real life case when you had uh, like unstable test. It, will, it was hard to understand why it was unstable. Yeah, it's another question how to fix it. Uh, one very good way 
to fix such kind of, uh, of flaky test is to disable button while something is being loaded and to enable button only when everything is loaded and ready to work. And actually, it's a good idea generally in, in like for usability so that user cannot click something that is not yet ready for using. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah this is just illustration how it worked in the end. Like initially the button was disabled and uh, initially the button is disabled and only after all lines are loaded the button gets enabled. Generally it's a good idea for usability to design your interfaces like this. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for me very often flaky test signals that you have some usability problems in your application that are not so much critical probably but still it's usability and potentially it might happen for real users also someday so that's the reason probably why it's a good idea to fix some flaky tests even that are not really like important or critical and what would be possible fixes for this problem yeah the, my favorite one just to put sleep before putting checkbox and actually it helps but it has uh, a lot of drawbacks let's not discuss it here just avoid slips in most cases uh, disable animations would be uh, is always a good idea but actually in this case it would not help yeah because loading still was slow even without animations uh, but yeah, so the only really good idea was to talk to developers and uh, ask them to disable this button in the beginning and enable after loading so production code uh, was changed so that the button was disabled, then all the data was loaded, and then, only then, the button was enabled. That was changed in production code, and corresponding change in test code was like the test initially waited until the button is enabled. As I mentioned in the beginning, like selenite methods like should be enabled will wait a little bit if needed, right? Actually, to be honest, this line even is not even needed because click method also can wait a little bit if button is disabled uh, so yeah in my experience it's the best solution is when you communicate to developers and you change both sides both production code and tests or sometimes only production code if what, if it was really bug or usability issue and my last probably example one of my favorite examples was really crazy yeah, it, it will be a little bit harder to explain uh, showing the video, but uh, yeah, it was really crazy. It, it was impossible, impossible to understand from logs, from test failures, from reports, why the test failed sometimes, very, very rarely, but sometimes it failed. And let's try to yeah, show it on video. It will be a little bit hard. Yeah. So important, yeah, uh, important part is that the test yeah, this is like initial screen. The test tried to fill some screen. It's not important. The test tried to click a red button. Yeah. So this is important place. The test needs to put this zero as some pin code, some pin code to this input and click the green button. Yeah. I, I still have some words in Russian. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and in most cases, the test worked. It filled four zeros, click the green button, and went like forward to the next page everything was okay so after clicking this button test should get to the next page in most cases it worked okay but sometimes the test was hanging at this place like we saw that click method worked click method worked it it didn't throw any exceptions it means that click was successful click to this button but the test was still hanging on this page test did not get to the next page and like no any errors, no logs, no no absolutely any problems, no exceptions. Just is hanging here. How to understand why why it doesn't go forward? We tried to debug any JavaScript errors. Probably click handler on this button was broken or something. No, it was not broken. Probably the button was not loaded properly. No, it was loaded. So what's the reason? Uh, and that was a really crazy case. And the only thing that really helped me to understand was video. When we started uh, saving video from the test, uh, and I started playing this video in very, very slow motion, like 100, 100 times slower, only then I realized what really happened. Let's see this slower. 
the same moment. Y yeah, so effect is like button was not clicked at all, but, but it was clicked. Now let's run the same uh, moment slower. Mm -hmm. The test, like clicks previous right button, okay, gets, get to the right screen, uh, fills, types in four zeros, uh -huh. clicks a green button. Mm -hmm. Did you see it? Did you see it? Where was the problem? Okay, let's run the same moment even more slower. Mm -hmm. Now we will see it. Once again, even more slower. What test does? Test clicks SMS, clicks. Oh, what happened here? Mm -hmm. No, yeah. Okay, even more slower. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to move this part away. Mm -hmm. Ah, shit. <laughs> Demo effect. Mm -hmm. So the test types in four zeros and is going to click the green button. And now look down. Did you see this gray area? What is this? This is scroll bar. Uh, and we can only see it on a very slow motion, on a very slow speed. Here appears the, uh, the scroll bar, bar, and the scroll bar like uh, uh, covers half of the button. It it apparently car covers exactly the center point of this button. So the scroll bar ate the click. Like, yeah, the scroll bar was visible only for a few milliseconds, probably for one millisecond, and I know. And at exactly at this moment, test tried to click this button, and test clicked actually the scroll bar. And the scroll bar was visible only for a few milliseconds and disappeared. When at next moment, yeah, you see, it disappeared. When at next moment, test failed, uh, fails, yeah. Scrollbar ate the click and disappeared, and when the test fails, it takes a screenshot, and you you cannot see scrollbar on the screenshot. You cannot see it on logs in logs. You cannot see it like anywhere. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, it did not say no. Unfortunately, yeah. In, you know, yeah, in Selenium, actually, there is a check. When you, when you try to click some element, and this element is covered by some other element, some diff, for example, some span, then Selenium can check it and can throw an exception. That element is covered by other elements. But not in this case, because the scroll bar was not some diff, but it was native element of the browser. And Selenium cannot control, like, native element of the browser. Scroll bars, dialogues, models, and so on. That's a problem, and you will never know what went wrong. That's a problem, yeah. Only video helped, and only very, very slow motion. Uh, yeah, flaky scroll bars, yeah. Mm -hmm. But actually, if we would try to analyze why it happened, uh, like, how to fix it, why it happened at all, why we had some scroll bar here, actually, then I realized that we have, again, usability problem. And this page actually this page was incorrectly formatted it had like a bad layout you see we have a very like long table here it doesn't fit to the screen and actually most of this table was like no empty you see like we have a lot of empty space here it was like a little bit badly designed it was too long it did not fit to the screen and that's why on on a small screen browser decided like to show scroll bar and then for some reason to hide scroll bar. I don't know why, <laughs> but yes. So we, in reality, we fixed this problem by redesigning this page. So for me, it's a brilliant example of like minor flaky test, which fails once in a year, probably, actually shows a problem, a real problem for real users. Not, not so much critical, but still it's usability. Yeah, it's good idea to redesign, to fix the design. Mm -hmm. Uh, probably it was the last video, and <clears throat> uh, if we try to summarize, like these were like my, some of my favorite examples of real-life flaky tests. And now let's try to 
take some takeaways, yeah, to summarize. Why can tests be flaky? There are most of typical problems, like unstable environments, unstable loca locators, asynchronous requests, s speed of requests. They sometimes get slower, sometimes get in different order responses. I mean, sometimes we have bugs in tests, uh, sometimes browser performance affects browser is slower at some moment. Browser window size might affect your tests. Not always, not in any project, every project, but sometimes it might affect. Uh, cache in the application, cache in the browser, cache in somewhere else might affect your tests, but I have also such examples. Uh, time, sometimes you measure time incorrectly. Yeah, I have this example also. I cannot fit it all in, in one talk, but yeah, I have a lot of such examples of how people use time incorrectly in Java, for example. Uh, animations might cause flaky tests. When you run parallel browsers, like parallel tests, two parallel browsers, they might also affect each other at any unpredictable moments. But also, flaky tests often are caused by bugs in application. That's why it's important for me to investigate flaky tests. These bugs, unfortunately, always are not critical. Like often, often they are not critical and often they are very hard to reproduce. And that's why developers decide uh, not today, like not going to fix it. Or probably managers say that, uh, no, no, don't waste time on it. Uh, <coughs> and sometimes these bugs are unrealistic. So n no user can click so quickly as, as test and like, uh, like really reproduce the problem, very, very rarely. And often these bugs are not critical or some usability issues and so on. So that's, that's a problem for me that developers are not going to fix them, but uh, it, it makes uh, our tests fragile and it, as a result, the whole company lost uh, the trust for automated tests. So that's a problem. Uh, and let's summarize some good practice, uh, how to like uh, predict uh, unstable tests. What, what can we do like before they happen? Uh, most of all, test pyramid. Probably all of you know it, but let me emphasize once again, test pyramid is a must. It's, it's very good practice. We use it in our company because unit tests are much more stable. They might also be flaky, but like very rarely. They are much more stable and much faster. Uh, Selenite is a very good practice to write stable tests. Yeah, I really recommend it. Uh, emulate external dependencies, slow services, uh, services that you don't control, emulate, build mock for them. And actually it's easy. I have separate talks about it. Uh, there are like already libraries for doing it easily. And clean state before every test. Uh, these are good practices to, to, to follow. Yeah, test pyramid is a mu must. Let me emphasize once again, these are just Actually, these are real numbers from one of our projects. We had in, in one of our projects, build projects, Internet Bank, something like that. We had 9,000 of unit tests at some moment and 900 of UI tests. That's a proportion, like uh, order, order of magnitudes. Uh, yeah, and then run, they run, unit tests run in one minute and UI tests run in 40 minutes. They are much more slower, much more unstable. That's why it's a good idea to, to cover all combinations, all hidden cases, all non-trivial cases to cover with unit tests. Uh, anyway, it's effective. I know that often managers say that, oh, developers are expensive. They are not going to waste time on writing tests. It's totally stupid idea, believe me. <laughs> it's, it's very effective in the end. Uh, yeah, so yeah, my best like experience is to cover with UI test only some like successful cases, like open the shop, buy a TV, and but all the corner cases combinations to cover with unit tests. You can write unit tests not only for backend, but also for front end for JavaScript. It's also possible, absolutely. Uh, so be prepared for fighting with unit, uh, uh, flaky tests. Uh, Enable logs or uh, be sure that you can read logs from your application that you are testing. It's, it often happens that automated testers cannot even have access to logs uh, often, or they cannot read them or don't wish to read them. 
it, there are many, many options how, how it's easy to do during, for example, this is one of our uh, snippets from real projects. Yeah, when uh, uh, so Jenkins finished running the tests, it exports it, exports uh, the folder with logs, for example. And so uh, when the test fails, you can read test reports and logs of the application. It's like easily doable. Of course, it depends on your application. Some might use Kibana and so on. Uh, yeah, another good option to save logs from application uh, is Allure report. This is a like framework for building nice readable reports. It might contain anything, screenshots, logs, everything. Yeah, be sure that you take screenshots when in case of test failure. Selenite does it by default, but there are also other options how to do that. It's also a good idea to save video of your test. Sometimes, as you saw, it's the only option. How can you investigate why the test failed? Uh, for saving video, there are several options. One of my favorite libraries is Video Recorder Java. You just need to add one annotation to your test and you get the video. It will be stored to some folder like build results or something like that. Uh, all today video was, will save it with using this library. Another option for saving video is using test containers or any other Docker image running uh, browser inside. Uh, yeah, test containers allows you to run the browser with just one annotation and you get a working browser in container where video is saved automatically. Oh yeah, you need to enable saving video, yeah. And that's it, you can run tests in uh, with video. Another option is Selenoid, which always uh, also is a like framework for running browsers inside of container even Android images, and they also can save videos. It's very convenient UI to like watch this video later. Uh, these are just few options like to prepare for fighting with flaky tests before. And my message is please invest in test independency. Uh, before each test, it's often usually a good idea to clean up application state or is it database state or something similar depending on your project. Uh, it's always a good idea to stop animations before every test or like wait until all the previous animations are finished, completed. Uh, animations, background requests and so on. It's always a good idea to create a new session uh, before every test or clean up cookies, clean up local storages and so on and so on. So it depends on the project but think twice probably you might clean up all this stuff b in the beginning of every test. As an option, how to achieve that, probably if, if cleaning database state is like no, expensive, one op good option is to have pool of database schemas or pool of users or pool of browsers, which you can r like rotate and clean up like between tests. There are technologies, yeah, it's not so, it's not rocket science, like you can do it. It's, it's a good idea to invest, invest time, like, in all this stuff. Uh, yeah, this is one very simple uh, option, how to be sure that like your dependencies are uh, up and running before every test. You can do it really with just one line of code, like really easy. If some service is not deployed occasionally today, your test will immediately fail and you will need to investigate anything. So my message is for, first of all, for developers, please participate in testing, please help QA, like to build stable locators, to avoid changing locators too much and so on and so on. QA really cannot fight with flaky test without your help. Like they can do something, but they cannot like win this, <laughs> this far. <laughs> My message to managers is please let developers participate in testing. Please don't say that, oh, they are expensive. No, it's, it's stupid really. Otherwise they will just waste your money. And my message, final message to QA engineers, please don't be afraid of flaky tests. Please don't be depressed because of flaky tests, but quite the opposite. Please love them. When you get back to work, apply all these good practices. Be prepared, set up logs, monitoring, whatever. Be prepared and wait and wait. And when a test fails, be happy because you go hunting. <laughs> Thank you.